I want to exhort you with some things based on the entire 51st chapter of Isaiah, and I, I would encourage you to read this whole chapter. It's a wonderful chapter of Scripture. And in reading through it, I, I think I saw here a word of comfort for the afflicted and the discouraged. This may or may not describe you tonight. If you're not in that category, uh, you can be thankful for that, but you, you may be in that category soon. We all have times when we need to be encouraged and comforted. And uh, this, this chapter has a lot to say to someone in that condition. And so here's my exhortation for you. First of all, if you are afflicted or discouraged and you need comfort, for comfort in the present, remember God's powerful works in the past. There's a tendency, there's a tendency to reason when you're discouraged, when you're afflicted. There's a tendency to reason. You'll be tempted to reason like this. Well, I know God used to work. He used to do these powerful things. But not now, or you might be tempted to reason, God helps other people, but I just don't, I don't think he's going to help me. These are, these are things that the enemy will put in your mind when you're, when you're downcast. Now, and this is flawed thinking. If you, for example, if you, if you think in that way when you're discouraged that God used to work, but he doesn't now, or he helps other people, but he won't help me. See, this is, you're insinuating that God has changed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And God doesn't change. That's right. Or perhaps you're insinuating, if this, if this kind of, if you're tempted with this kind of thinking, maybe you're insinuating that God doesn't care. Mm-hmm. This is the same issue Jesus addressed when he said, why are you so anxious about your life? God takes care of the, the birds. He Take, he dresses flowers up really nice. If God cares about birds and flowers, don't you think he cares about you? Jesus said, oh, you of little faith. You see how we're tempted to think when we're downcast? Now, the, the prophet in Isaiah 51 specifically has in mind the creative power of God. That God can create something out of nothing. Nothing. And God's the only one that can do that. Do you ever think about the power of God in creation? In his ability to speak, the, he spoke the worlds into existence. Maybe, maybe, this, maybe we don't think about this as much as, we, as much as we should. When you pray to God, you are praying to the creator of everything. You're praying to the God who spoke a word and it was. Yeah. Amen. Remember that God created a nation from one man. And he was an old man. And he had a barren wife. Remember how he did that. He created a nation. Remember that you are God's new creation in Christ. And you see, the, the scripture teaches us that God doesn't abandon what he creates. He didn't, he didn't create the world and then abandon it. He, did, he's not, he created you, new creature in Christ. He's not going to abandon you either. There's no reason to be discouraged because nothing is impossible for God. Amen. Nothing. This is the God who parted the Red Sea and the people walked across on dry ground. It might be a good exercise sometimes, if you are discouraged, to just rehearse everything the Lord has done. Maybe you can write it down. Just make a list of everything everything the Lord has done. So for comfort in the present, remember God's powerful works in the past. Secondly, take comfort in God's eternal salvation. Salvation is a major theme in Isaiah, by the way. Everything in this world is temporal. Temporal means it passes away. It's temporary. That's why some, uh, some humorous brother once said that their favorite passage in Scripture is, and it came to pass. Everything in this world is passing away. It's temporal. 
That includes all the bad things. Amen. All the bad things are, pa are passing away. It's not going to last. Even the heavens and the earth are going to pass away. But God's people won't. God's people will survive the passing of the heavens and the earth. So if we've invested in what is eternal, we have nothing to fear from what is temporal. Amen. Nothing at all. Thirdly, don't be discouraged by the wickedness of man. Don't be discouraged by the wickedness of man. It is tempting for God's people to become overly impressed by the seeming prosperity of the wicked. Sometimes it just looks like wicked people are getting away with things. It looks like they're prospering while the righteous are suffering. See, this is the theme of the 73rd Psalm, I believe, if you want to read that. Remember that earthly wealth or power or success can be lost in a moment of time, see? So the wicked are prospering, looks like wicked people are wealthy and happy and successful. But all of that can go away in a moment of time. God can just Amen. take it away. And, of course, eventually, remember, death comes to all men. So that's why the Scripture says the wicked are set in slippery places. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. you remember that. When you, if, you're, if you're discouraged by what someone's doing to you or what wicked men are saying about you or the people of God, just remember this about, about man. Yes. Amen. The fear of man yes. is a sign of unbelief. It's a sign of unbelief. We're to fear God. We're not supposed to fear man yeah, whose, whose breath is in his nostril, who's like a flower of the field, the Scripture says. Don't, don't fear man. Sometimes we're, um, we're discouraged. We're tempted to be discouraged because perhaps we think faith in God isn't worth it. See, a lot of people that that don't believe, the reason they don't believe is because they don't think faith in God is worth it. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, wicked people say, I'd rather have yeah. what I can get now. Yeah. 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 But the pleasures of sin are only for a season, only for a season. And so sometimes what we have to do is we have to take the long view of things. Mm -hmm. yes, take the long view mm -hmm. and wait on the Lord. And that leads me to this fourth exhortation. Put your hope for the future in the righteous judgments of God. Put your hope for the future in the righteous judgments of God. We tend to want to control our future. And there are things we can't control. That's why we get discouraged, right? You, you get discouraged when there's, there's, something, <coughs> excuse me, there's something that's out of control that you're desperately trying to control and you can't. So you... You become afraid or you, be, or you get discouraged about it. But when we put our hope in the Lord, see, having hope means we're not trying to control everything. We're trusting God. So you can kind of let go. Having hope means believing that God knows what is best for us, even when we don't yet see what it is. See, hope means you don't have it all yet. You don't see it all yet. But you're trusting that that what's coming from the Lord is, is good, is in fact the best thing for you. So you put your hope in the Lord. God's in control of the future. The scripture says he knows the end from the beginning. That's God. Now we don't know the end. We can't see the end. And so a lot of times when you get discouraged, what, really, what that really is, is you're impatient. You're saying, I, I want this resolved now. I want to have this now. And you're becoming impatient. That's why the scripture says, wait on the Lord. Amen. Wait on the Lord. He, he knows how this thing that you're in is going to end, even if you can't see it right now. Uh, the poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow said this, Though the mills of God grind slowly, yet they grind exceedingly small. Though with patience he stands waiting, with exactness grinds he all. Yes. See? And that's particularly in, in true in, in respect to the wicked, yes. as I was mentioning before. You see, God has promised that he will overcome all opposition. And by the way, evil, basically evil is opposition to God. That's what evil is. And God has said evil's not going to win. It's not. 
However, we still live in a fallen world where there's still opposition to God. And so this, this might sound like it's more of a discouragement than an encouragement, but it actually is an encouragement. Don't expect too much in this present evil world. What happens is, is people in our generation, you see, they're, they're looking to, to certain things in life to make them happy, to make them feel satisfied. And, and for God's people, this is, this is not appropriate. You, there's nothing in this world that's ever going to really satisfy you. So don't, don't expect too much now in this present world. Our hope is actually anchored in the world to come, not in this world. So you put your hope in, in the righteous judgments of God. One more thing here. Seek to understand what God is doing and then submit to his perfect will. Amen. There are a lot of wonderful promises to people in Scripture who seek the Lord. Seek. Jesus said, ask, seek, knock. If you ask, it'll be given. If you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be open to you. The scripture says in one place, seek the Lord while he may be found. In other words, don't take it for granted that God's going to be easily found all the time. You may have to like really seek, really ask, knock harder. <laughs> Sometimes God hides himself. And you have to seek him all the more earnestly in these times. Jesus said we should seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And I've realized that what that really involves, seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness, and it means giving up your agenda and the way you think things ought to be. You're so, so when you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, you're saying, Lord, I, I want your agenda for my life. I want things to be the way you want them to be. That's submitting to his will. This is a way to overcome discouragement. See, you can, you can, you can get discouraged because you, you think things, well, things are just not the way I want them to be. See, in the flesh, you can think that way. God may be at work in ways you don't easily perceive. God may be allowing certain things into your life to shape your character and your faith. And he sees you better than you see yourself. He knows what needs to be changed or strengthened in your life. God is always working. We just don't always perceive it because the circumstances seem to often, often seem to contradict it. Yeah. Or there are times when we may not be willing to submit to what he wants to do in our lives. So, you see, this is a source of, can be a source of discouragement. So seek to understand what God is doing and then submit to his perfect will. So that's my exhortation for you from Isaiah 51. Any of you have anything you'd like to say, Brother Jeremy? Yeah. This 